In this video, we're going to conduct a virtual investigation and then analyse the results in terms of the law of conservation of momentum and the law of conservation of kinetic energy in terms of interactions during collisions, during both elastic and inelastic collisions. We'll be using this simulation and the aim will be to collect evidence that can be used to support a claim that the total system momentum and total system kinetic energy are or are not conserved during both the elastic and inelastic collisions. Now recall from one of the videos you watched where we talked about conservation of momentum during collisions is conserved. However, conservation of kinetic energy is only conserved during elastic collisions. When it's involving inelastic collisions, where the objects maybe stick together after the collision, then the energy, the kinetic energy is not conserved. However, the total energy is conserved. So in during inelastic collisions you also get loss of energy from the system in terms of energy forms such as sound or heat or during deformations for example. So during our investigations, we should find that momentum is conserved for both types of collisions. However, only elastic collisions, we should find that kinetic energy is con conserved. However, for inelastic collisions, it will not be conserved. So recall, recall our formula from the formula sheet for conservation of momentum. And this is the one we've been looking at during problem solving where, where we've expanded it out and perhaps have been looking to find one of the variables. Okay, so we're going to look at this from a different perspective in terms of we want to look at the change in momentum of the system. So I'm going to write it as in the change of momentum of the system. So usually when we look at the change we subtract the final from the initial. So it's like saying okay um, we're looking at the sum of momentum after minus the sum of the momentum before. Now if momentum has been conserved that then these two should be the same therefore the change in momentum of the system should be zero. And likewise for conservation of kinetic energy. This is the formula we have from the formula sheet. So if we're looking at the change in kinetic energy of the system, we should find that the kinetic energy after minus the kinetic energy before should equal zero if kinetic energy has been conserved for the system. So we know for elastic collisions this should be true, however for inelastic collisions we're expecting it not to be true. Okay, so I'll give you the link to the interactive and then to open it up into full screen you just click in this corner here. Okay, and then I will show you how to 
set up the spreadsheet to collect your data. So we've got two blank spreadsheets for elastic and inelastic collisions. In the first trial, set it up as is and run the simulation and record the data. So before we do it, okay, we've got the red car and the blue car. The mass of both cars are one kilogram and the initial velocity of the red is five meters per second in the positive direction and minus five for the blue car. Okay, so let's enter that data. Okay, so we will run the simulation and collect the final velocities. So we press start and you can pause it. Okay, so now the red's going minus five and the blue's going five in the positive direction. So we enter those values. Okay, now we'll set up some formulas to do all the calculation. So the first one is the momentum of the red beforehand. So momentum of red before is equals the mass times the initial velocity. And we want the momentum afterwards. So it's the mass times the final velocity. Okay, we'll leave the kinetic energy for a bit. We'll just go on and do those cal same calculations for the blue. So it's mass times initial velocity for that one and then equals the mass times the final velocity. Okay, so let's do the kinetic energy of the red beforehand. So it's equals 0 0.5 times mass times the initial velocity squared. So that's that little hat sign above the 6 squared. Okay, now we can do the kinetic energy afterwards for the red vehicle. So 0 0.5 times mass times the final velocity squared. We repeat for the blue car. So we've got equals. Okay, so let's calculate the sum of the momentum before. So equals the momentum before is 5 plus of the red car and the momentum before of the blue car. So we add those together and we get zero. For the momentum, sum of the momentum afterwards, so the sum, so the momentum of the red after plus the momentum of the blue after, we get zero. So therefore the change is simply the, the, sorry, the sum of the momentum afterwards minus the sum of the momentum beforehand. So same, let's do the kinetic energy before. So the sum of the kinetic energy of the red car before plus kinetic energy of the blue car before equals, and then for afterwards, kinetic energy after, plus that one and then to calculate the change in kinetic energy it's equals the sum after minus the sum before. Okay so our evidence from this first trial is that kinetic energy has been conserved and from this value here and also that momentum 
of the system has also been conserved for this inelastic collision. So you will repeat and do a number of different, just change these variables for the mass, uh, for the velocities. In okay, so you can change, you have to reset it. So you can change the mass of any of these and mix it up a little bit. You can maybe have the initial velocity of the blue vehicle in the positive direction and have this one catching it. Okay, you can actually, before you start, you can move them a little bit closer. That doesn't matter, like so. Okay, so play around with those values. Now for part B, you're going to choose the inelastic collision. And that means we go to the second spreadsheet. So it's similar but different. So during the inelastic collisions, the carts will combine. So we have to have another field here for the combined mass and the combined velocity afterwards. So that's the only real difference in that. Okay, so I'll just take you through again how to do this one. So I've set up the values the same as the first one using elastic collision. So we've got one kilogram masses, a forward initial velocity of five meters per second for the red and a negative five for the blue. So if we run it, okay, so they, they combine and the final velocity is actually zero in this case. So let's fill in our data. Okay, we can do a formula here to combine the masses. So it equals the mass of the red plus the mass of the blue. Then we can type in the combined velocity. and then do all our calculations here. So momentum of the red before, kinetic energy of the red before, momentum of blue before, kinetic energy of the blue before. So the momentum of the combined gives zero, the kinetic energy of the combined. Now we can do the sum of the momentum before. And the sum of momentum afterwards. Which is equal to the combined momentum. Change in momentum, so it's the sum of the momentum after minus the sum of the momentum before. Kinetic, sum of kinetic energy before, sum of kinetic energy afterwards, which is the combined kinetic energy. And then the change in kinetic energy of the system is the final, well, the kinetic energy after minus kinetic energy before. So what's our evidence here? The momentum is conserved because the change in momentum is zero. However, kinetic energy has not been conserved. So the sum of the kinetic energy afterwards is less than the kinetic energy beforehand. Now I'm just going to quickly 
look at my data when I did it uh, because I want you to realize here uh, if it's suggesting that momentum has not been conserved because this is not zero it's actually due to a rounding error from the simulation because the simulation is only recording for example to one decimal place so there might be some sort of rounding error so essentially if it's you know maybe 0.1 or 0.2 that's you know it would be zero if we had it to a um, more number of decimal places okay and just to finish off with this one remember to any cells that have formulas you can copy them across ready to go